Good morning. Fern is going to help us learn about the hotels this morning. Um, yeah. So let people give people a few minutes to roll in this morning. Um, unfortunately, because I am feeling bad myself today. Um, please let me know like where you're tuning in from and uh, any questions you have. Um, but I won't be able to maybe answer them directly uh, as quickly as usual. But I will certainly try. <laughs> All right, Fern. Yeah, so we'll give people a few minutes to roll in. Um, I want Fern to settle down a little bit, too. She's a little... I woke her up this morning, so she was not too happy with me. Um, but Fern is going to be helping us learn about B hotels. They're really, really important, Fern. <laughs> So, um, I'll get started. So I'm not going to go through the full process of building one. I will show you guys how to make them. Um, hi, Dad. <laughs> um, good morning, Brandy. Good morning, Greenbelt Hiker and Penelope. Um, so what we're, I'm going to show you guys is a example of a bee hotel. Um, but there's so many ways that you can make them, um, they, there's lots of different designs on the internet. You can make them like, like an actual kind of house. Um, but there's a thousand ways you can do them. Uh, so it just depends on your creativity. And if you don't feel like making one, you can actually still buy them too. Um, garden centers, Home Depot, stuff like that. Um, they're going to be over with the garden stuff typically next to like the bird boxes and the bat houses. Um, they're all kind of lumped in together. Um, so what we have... It is this is not a by far a finished product. Um, so what I did is I took just a little slab of wood, and we have a whole bucket right here of all these tree cookies. Um, so sometimes you'll hear people refer to little cut up pieces of tree as a tree cookie, and then we drilled some holes in them. Um, so those holes are really really important. Um, so that's what the carpenter bees are going to be using. That's where they're going to uh, lay their eggs. Uh, so I did screw a couple in to this, um, but you can just take it and uh, kind of do what you want with it. Uh, so ideally you would want to cover this whole little thing with it. Um, big ones, small ones. You want a bunch of different sizes, a bunch of the different thicknesses. Um, the holes to be all different sizes. So there's lots of ways that you can do this. Um, I would recommend, as I found out yesterday when I was <laughs> prepping this, if you can find pine or another softer wood, it's definitely going to be easier for you. Um, these are pretty hard to get through um, without pre-drilling the wood that I have here. Um, so definitely want to look into that before you start your project um, so you have everything prepared. Um, but this is just a little example do um let me get this so so I'll show you guys yeah so I just covered that whole piece of wood with those blocks um all different types of sizes good morning Kim uh, so the B hotels are important because they are primarily used by carpenter bees um, so they're kind of similar looking to bumblebees, I <laughs> Um, but they're not gonna really bother you. The males don't have a stinger. The females do, but of course they're not generally gonna sting unless they're captured. Um, so they're generally pretty docile. They're not super aggressive whatsoever. Um. But what happens though is because they will live in these little holes. Um, they're solitary, unlike honeybees. Um, most of our native bees around here are actually more solitary. Um, the honeybees are really our biggest ones that have those big colonies that we have around here. Um, so they'll actually just find a little hole in wood. Uh, they prefer one that's already there. Uh, so putting these hotels or building structures for them is going to help us prevent them from eating our pavilion or our building or our deck. Uh, so they're just going to use these holes to lay their eggs. Um, but if you have a problem at your house, what you can do 
is you, if you could put one up now, um, they'll lay their eggs in there. And then next spring, or during the winter time, um, like November, late November, early December, if they're chewing on your house, I would move the, you know, the hotel to the edge of your property. Uh, so when they reemerge, that's what they'll tend to go to. Um, so then they won't they'll leave your house alone. Um, they don't prefer to make their own holes. That's why we say to pre-drill some in there. Um, you can use a bunch of different sizes, um, but they're going to go into an existing structure. Um, they're not going to be chewing much on their own. Um, so you will occasionally see the chew. That's when you see the sawdust and stuff like that. Um, but they're not going to do extensive damage, typically, um, unless you don't. Sorry, guys. And you do want to try to um, deter them from your house. Um, you can put one of these up move it next winter and then they'll they should go back to that same spot um, so this is a super basic uh, example that you can use for them um, we don't want to try to use insecticides and stuff like that um, just because of the impacts those have on all why did it get really dark um, the impacts that has on all of our higher levels of the food chain uh, so the insecticides don't just kill the insects that we want to have around, actually. Um, so they're going to kill the smaller birds that eat those insects. And they could even kill fern if she ate up enough of those bu birds that had eaten those bugs. Uh, so it's called bioaccumulation. And so with a level of chemical and stuff like that on the smallest level of the food chain, it's still going to have that impact on the higher level. Um, because they're eating all those things that are eating all those chemicals, so it's still going to hurt them. Um, we see it with our um, rodenticides and stuff like that. That's a really common reason why we get um, sick raptors and stuff like that. Because um, they eat those rats and mice that have had those rodenticides, and then unfortunately it kills them the same way that it kills those mice that we want to get rid of. Right, Miss Fern? Oh yeah, this is a just super basic. Um, I've seen them made with pallets. I've seen them made um, like kind of like an actual house, which is pretty cool. Uh, so there's a bunch of different ways that you can do this. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on, Kim. It keeps... So I'm in our pavilion this morning. Um, it might just be the... I don't even know, because there's not even any clouds in the sky. So I'm not totally sure what's going on with it. It keeps going just back in and out. Right, Fern? Uh, but... What are you seeing, Fern? <laughs> it was always, if you have any questions about Fern, um, I'll definitely try to answer them for you. I don't know why this keeps going in and out. There? Maybe? Let's try it out. Um... But yeah, these guys are really important because they're really good pollinators. So that some species will actually only pollinate one type of plant. Um, so we really need all of our bees and our insects to help us have our own food and our flowers and stuff like that. Um, so the carpenter bees, which these are primarily used by, um, will usually pollinate uh, eggplant and tomato. Um, but those are some of the biggest things what, that's why they're doing that. Um, <laughs> I know, Dante, you're so jealous. Um, they're also going to pollinate lots of different types of flowers and um, lots of different plants. But we love our pollinators. Um, they're really not doing great, um, especially our different types of bees, um, unfortunately. And we need all of those pollinators to help us have our food, which is really important for us. Right, Miss Fern? Yeah. Um, so I'm not going to actually drill in front of her today because she's a little stressy. Um, but from the picture, this is the really basic idea that you guys can use to deter your carpenter bees from chewing on your house. Uh, so you can actually take a little walk for a bit. Uh, I do want to show you, so we have carpenter bees here, right? No, you're a little antsy this morning. And 
I'll show you guys where we have them here. Right? I know. Easy. Just happened. Hi, Michelle. Sorry, guys. I'm just trying to fix my screen. There we go. Right. Hi, Miss Fred. On our right here. Or our Ed Hall. Sorry, guys. I know the light. Because they've been chewing right up here. <laughs> right. <laughs> cool. So we do have like our own bat boxes and um, bird boxes around the center. Um, so we're trying to help keep our guy, our good boy Dante. Our own building is pretty healthy. Sorry, guys. I'm just going to put her back on the thing right now. Hey, step up. So. Oh, we can. Okay. There we go. Uh, so she has pretty severe head trauma. She's actually pretty well flighted. Uh, so she can go down great in their enclosure. Um, but she hit her head pretty hard, um, so she w clearly isn't afraid. You have a bug on I'm really sorry, guys. Technical issues this morning is real. <laughs> right? Um, they're one of our most common types of bar dogs. I have that. Right, Miss Fern. I'm sorry, I'm learning how to film by myself, Fern. This is a big learning experience for me. So sorry, everyone. Right. What do you think, pretty girl? Like, eh. <laughs> like, you woke me up. <laughs> now, these guys are the ones that sound like monkeys. Uh, so they make the who cooks for you, who cooks for you all call. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> Look at the camera, miss. Hello. Oh, Fern. You're a hoot. <laughs> right. Uh, so if you guys have any questions about Fern or about our insect hotels, um, like I said, they're pretty simple. Um, you can kind of just do whatever works for you. Um, so if you want to buy them, great. Um, they're also super easy to make if you have um, a, even just a handsaw and some nails. It's definitely easier with screws and a drill, but you can do it, certainly can do it with nails. Um, but the biggest thing is having those holes in there, into, inside the wood, um, to help our insects. Um, you can put different types of wood, different types of holes, you can put plant stems in there. Um, like we have a bunch of knotweed here at the center, and that has this hollow stem, so you could stuff a bunch of that in there. Um, so it really just depends on what you have at your house and what's at your disposal easily. Um, but they're really easy to make, and they're great for our insects. Um, the smaller guys that we don't tend to think about when we think of ecosystem ecology, because they're the basics 